Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about some other uh, important mathematicians of the 18th century, in addition to the ones that we've already talked about previously in this playlist. So first, we're going to start with a couple of uh, mathematicians I probably should have included with the important French mathematicians at the end of the last video. First one is Johann Heinrich Lambert, uh, born in 1728 and died in 1777. Uh, he was born in France. He worked some in Germany as well. He was the son of a tailor, and he, uh, because they didn't have a lot of money, he had to work at a young age to help take care of his rather large family. I think it's five boys and two or three girls. Um, despite hardship, um, he eventually continued his education and became a tutor. That's how he made some money for a while. His first w uh, work that he worked on was the passage of light through various media. He did some work with cosmology. He was the first to present the notion of the universe being made up of galaxies, of stars, several galaxies. And the two things that he's most famous for, one was the theory of parallelism that was published in 1766. And on there, he worked on trying to prove Euclid's fifth postulate, and he actually came pretty close to finding a hyperbolic geometry, uh, but but fell short of that that goal. Well, he didn't know that, that wasn't his goal. He didn't know about hyperbolic geometry, and he couldn't envision it, and that's why he uh, fell short of finding it. He did introduce hyperbolic functions as one of the first ones to work with those and do a lot with it. But probably the thing he's most famous for is he was the first one to prove that pi is irrational, which he did in about 1768. More generally, he proved if x is rational, then neither e to the x nor tangent of x can be rational. And of course, since tangent of pi over 4 is 1, from there you can get to the fact that uh, pi has to be irrational. He conjectured that E and pi were both transcendental, uh, but was not able to prove that. Uh, that proof had to wait for later. He was the first one to give a systematic development of hyperbolic functions. He did some early work, or did some work in probability, work with perspective and a cartography as well. Another French mathematician uh, that was important was Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier. Um, he was born in 1768, died in 1830. He was French. He did some work with heat conduction. He was a revolutionary. Uh, there was some controversy uh, around surrounding him. He did work in partial differential equations and what we now call Fourier series, infinite series of trigonometric functions. So if you've uh, uh, probably used some Fourier series, uh, perhaps then uh, you're familiar with his name. He was his father's 15th child. He came from a large family. As a youth, he was educated in literature, French, and Latin. At 13, he started focusing on mathematics. At 19, he was training for the priesthood, but he abandoned that track to study mathematics. He was involved in the French Revolution. At one point, he was arrested. He feared that he would face the guillotine. He was taught by Lagrange, Laplace, and Monge, so he had some really good teachers there. He rated Lagrange as the best mathematician of that bunch. He taught at the Collège de France, the École Polytechnique. He was an outstanding lecturer. Uh, when Napoleon's army invaded Egypt, he was part of the army there, going there as an engineer with them. He uh, while he was there, he participated in archaeological explorations and set up schools in Egypt. Now, moving over to Scotland, we come across Colin Maclaurin. Yeah, he was born in 1698, died in 1746. He was the son of a parish minister who translated Psalms into Gaelic. The, his father did. At 11, uh, he attended the University of Glasgow and graduated at the age of 14. Uh, he was a professor at age 19 at the University of, University of Aberdeen. 
And at 1725, he took a position at the University of Edinburgh. And he was a very popular and effective teacher. So a lot of the mathematicians we've talked about, most of them did some teaching, uh, but weren't necessarily known for that. But Maclaurin was one that was a very good teacher. teacher. He uh, was uh, in Paris for a little bit and tied with Euler and Daniel Bernoulli for a, a mathematical prize there, which is pretty good considering uh, probably at that time Euler and Daniel Bernoulli were probably the top two mathematicians alive at that mo moment. He published the first systematic exposition of Newtonian calculus. So uh, he was able to, to uh, probably explain New Newton's calculus better than Newton could and gave a uh, sort of, I guess, a textbook in English explaining that. Um, he used Greek geometry and the method of exhaustion to try to make Newtonian cal calculus more rigorous. In his book there, he talks about what we now call Maclaurin series, um, which are, are, uh, are like their Taylor series um, centered at zero. He talked about the Euler-Maclaurin summation formula, the Maclaurin-Cauchy integral test for series convergence 50 years before the birth of Cauchy. So in calculus, uh, calculus 2, you probably studied um, Taylor series and Maclaurin series. That's named after him. And you probably did the integral test as well. So those are some things that we can attribute to Maclaurin. Uh, this algebra textbook that he over Newtonian, well, he did an algebra textbook. He also did a calculus textbook. His algebra textbook was pretty popular. He did some work with geometry with, with higher plane curves, and he did some work with actuarial studies as well. Now, lest you think all of the mathematicians at the, this time that were any good were, were white dudes from Europe, uh, I've got a few more mathematicians I want to uh, lift up as well. Uh, first one here is Maria Agnesi. Uh, she was born in 1718, died in 1799 in Milan, which at that time was, was in the Habsburg Empire. Now it is in Italy. She came from a wealthy family in the silk trade, which, of course, being a wealthy family, uh, that afforded her the ability to get a good education. She was the oldest of 21 siblings. Her father had uh, multiple wives sequentially. Um, she was well educated by private tutors, and apparently she was fluid, fluent in very many uh, languages. And she was uh, an outspoken defender of education for women in a time when uh, women were not by and large educated uh, at the higher levels as much as men. She was offered a chair of mathematics in Bologna, but decided to decline that. Uh, she was a little bit later in her life when that happened. And ultimately, she had quite a bit of money, but she ended up spending it on charity and ended up dying poor. But the thing that she's known about in mathematics is her calculus textbook, particularly a, her, it was particularly her differential calculus, and it was very well received and uh, was was used quite a bit. Another thing that she's known for is in her textbook, there's a curve that she calls uh, La Varicia, La Viciera, um, which basically translates to something like a rope that's twisted or a rope that turns a sail. But unfortunately, that word is similar to another Italian word. When it got translated in English, that Italian word uh, got translated as witch. So that curve is now known as the witch of Agnesi. Here's an equation for it. Y equals a, uh, 8 a cubed over x squared plus 4 a squared for different values of a. And here's a visual of it. And let's let's go here and see if we can, can go to this. Here's a uh, GeoGebra applet that someone put together here and you can see the curve here you can change the value of a to see how that uh, gets the various curves in this family 
and this one uh, there's some some properties here that you can kind of see where this curve comes from so as this point goes around okay you can see a line through the origin to the point there and a horizontal line there vertical you can see where that intersects there so you can kind of see see how that curve is related to the circle there I'll let you let you think about that a little better you can go to this this uh, particular um, website and uh, take a look at that the next person I want to look at we're going to move away from Europe altogether and go over to Japan Aida Yasu, uh, Yasuaki, uh, born in 1747, died in 1817 uh, in Edo, which is now Tokyo, Japan. He was employed by the shogunate as a civil engineer, published nearly 2,000 works, so he published lots and lots of things. He worked in geometry, algebraic expressions, construction of equations, number theory, continued fractions, and he was a distinguished teacher of mathematics. So one of several people we could lift up there. And now let's go to the, the fledgling new country of the United States of America. And we look at one of their earliest prominent mathematicians. Um, at this point in America, in the 18th century, first of all, it wasn't the United States of America until 1776. So it's only the last quarter of the century that we even had the United States of America, of course, uh, there were there were, uh, all kinds of things here, people here before, but uh, from 1731 to 1806, we see the life of Benjamin Banneker, and there weren't a lot of uh, really prominent mathematicians in America at that time, uh, being just coming up from the colonies to a new n a nation, uh, working on mathematics research and so forth wasn't a high priority. But uh, nevertheless, mathematics was an important skill for many things. Um, Benjamin Banneker stands out because he was one of the best mathematicians of the time. And he also stands out because he was an African-American and a son of a freed slave. He was born and lived in Baltimore, Maryland. And he was educated in a Quaker school. And mostly he was a farmer. But he also built clocks and gained quite a reputation as a skilled workman with clocks. He actually took a clock apart and figured out how it worked from that and used that to, uh, to reverse engineer and build him a clock. He assisted with the survey of Washington, D.C. And probably why he's on this list is because of his work in astronomy. And he developed an astro astronomical almanac. A couple other people I could mention uh, from America at this time that had some uh, prominent mathematical skills were much more known for, for their work in, uh, in politics and founding our nation were Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson. But Benjamin Banneker stands out as an interesting early figure in American uh, mathematical history.